Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. So today we'll talk about something called as RMI, which is which stands for it's a remote. Uh oh, honestly, it's remote method invocation. It's invocation. Now, in first place, we'll see why we require RMI. Now, see, let's suppose if you have a class A. So let's define a class A, and in this class, we'll be having lots of members like variables and methods. And uh, let's say we have two variables int i comma j and you'll be having a method called as show. You'll be having a method like uh, display. Uh, you'll be having add. So you have all these methods here. And then you have class B. In this class B, you'll be having a main function. And you can, if you, if you want to use this variables here, if you want to call this uh, variables or methods from this class, what you need is you have to create an object right you have to build and has a relationship here so we'll say new a which means this obj here is your reference and this new a here is your object right so this is this is your object and this is your reference or you can say we have this reference obj to to go to this object a now how it works is like let me show you a, uh, a diagram with this I'm not a good painter, but uh, we'll try, we'll try. Let's imagine this is your system and you'll be having two types of memory. One is your, uh, this is your stack memory and you'll be having a heap memory here. Now how it works, when, when you create an object, like when you, when you write this statement new A, it will create an object in your heap memory. Okay, this is your heap memory, you'll be creating an object and this object will have some address. Let's suppose this address is 102. Uh, not a good painter, say you. Uh, I say it. So let's suppose we have uh, we have one not two. This is your address now. So this memory will have uh, or this object we have address called as one not two. Then in this section in your stack area, what you will be having is uh, so what I can say this will be your uh, object name which is obj, and the address of obj will be one not two so this is how it works right so in your system you will be having a, 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 a object with address one not two and then in stack memory what you will be having is is the reference and the address uh, address location of that object now here uh, like when i say when you, when you create object of a so we have this reference obj which is stored in heap uh, so in stack and the objects is stored in heap memory so next time when i say well, let, let's suppose if I say it's obj, it's obj dot show, like we have defined this method here. If I say obj dot show, it will go to your stack memory. It will search for this object named as obj. It will check the location, which is one not two, and it will call the location. Now the amazing part is both this type of memory, stack and heap, belongs to the same JVM or same machine. What if? we have two different machines so this stack belongs to machine one and this heap belongs belongs to machine two so that means there will be there, there will be two different jvm now this time when you say obj102 this will search for the same location or same jv same heap memory in the jvm but what we want we want to call this 102 object of another jvm that is not possible directly using this this statement right it be because it will always for search for the local memory so what we have to create is we will be having this implementation on another machine and we'll be having this class on another, another machine so that means we have to different jvms so in this scenario you have to call a method you have to invoke a method which belongs to the remote machine and for that we require a concept called as rmi so we'll see how to work with RMI in my next part. So do subscribe for the further videos and thank you so much for watching.